So I'm Itai. I'm, I'm one, one of the, the co-founders, co-founders of Dynamic. Dynamic. And in, in a nutshell, nutshell, really what we, what we do, do is pretty, pretty straightforward, which is everything that happens when you click login on a website or an app. Right? And, and that, that can be a very Web3 experience. experience. So, so logging in with MetaMask, Coinbase, Phantom, across the lawn, EVM, and Bitcoin, Bitcoin, and it, it can be a very Web2 experience. experience. Right? Right? So, so dynamic, dynamic really looks like this, as the name suggests. It is very dynamic. dynamic. So it's an SDK that you can use in your app. Uh, and it can look like this. It can look like a Web2 login tool. It can look like a complete reverse, which is a Web3 login system across EVM, Solana, and Bitcoin. And it kind of works across everything. So it can be um, kind of your design, your colors, your themes. It can be a pop-up, uh, or it can be embedded. It can be fully headless. The world's your oyster. So you can actually do whatever you want in order to create kind of a user and have someone log in. Right? And at the very basic level with Dynamic, let's say you are building for an app that's a Web2 app, uh, you can have login with email, login with Google, and at that point, pretty much one click generate embedded wallets for folks. So they don't have to think about any of the complexity, no complex pop-ups or anything of that sort. Just one click and it kind of just works. Uh, now, now Dynamic actually can do a bunch more. more. So, so you can have it not just generate embedded wallets, but have folks connect third-party wallets to the same account or connect multiple login methods to the same account. So you can start with email, and then add Google, then add um, you know, uh, Twitter, or anything of that sort, and start building a profile for your users. You can also use Dynamic to build really sophisticated wallets that connect to everything else. So if you build Dynamic and you open it on mobile and click connect, uh, it does a QR code scanner. So, and I'll show it in a minute, and you can actually connect to any site or any app uh, outside the ecosystem. So think about Dynamic, and we'll dive into things in a second, but the very high level, think about Dynamic is everything that has to do with login and user management on, on your site. Now, before I start showing a bunch more things, does that make sense? Okay, so let's start seeing what Dynamic looks like in the wild. So Dynamic can look like a bunch of things, right? So if you go to Magic Eden, and you, which is the biggest NFT site today globally, and you click Connect Wallet, this is all dynamic. This is all powered by dynamic, right? So as you can see, they use it as a very Web3 tool, right? Log in with Solana, log in with Bitcoin, EVM, Base, etc. cetera. Uh, and they use it to start creating really co- complex experiences, right? So they use it uh, to log in, to sign, and then let you link additional wallets to the same account, right? So you can start building a profile of, hey, I'm a trader. I have 10 wallets across Bitcoin and EVM and Solana, and you can link all of them together. So that's one example of a use case of Dynamic, which is a very Web3 use case, right? So uh, the, the entire kind of profile management or account setting is a headless implementation of Dynamic. So username and email address and linking Twitter, that all runs on Dynamic, but it's semi-headless and semi-using our SDK. So that's one example. Or if you go to the complete other opposite example, the arena is the biggest uh, kind of social uh, friend tech type uh, company on top of Avalanche. And if you click enter the arena uh, and log in with Twitter, I'll authorize the app and I've created an embedded wallet in the background that's powered by Dynamic as well. And that was my entire experience, right? So now I have an embedded wallet in the background with the arena, but I've not seen any of that as a user. I logged in with Twitter and it kind of just worked, right? So Dynamic can be as Web3 as you want it to be or as Web2 as you want it to be. And it's really your SDK for, again, everything wallet related. Let's look at a couple more examples. If you go to sound.xyz and you click sign in, that's powered by Dynamic and they mix email and social. If you go to Doodles, right, which is one of the biggest NFT collections out there and you click get started, this is powered by Dynamic, right? And you can see how different folks implement it more as an email web two type implementation or more as a web three type implementation. Now as a good example, let's go to a different app, Dflow which is uh, kind of a trading app. Here, they implemented Dynamic in a fully headless way. So let's enter my private email. Um, If you need to send me emails, let me know. Let's enter my code. Bear with me for a second. 775. uh, And at that point, I'm done. I entered the app. I didn't need to know anything about crypto as an end user. 
and I can start trading things, right? So in this case, I can really quickly use uh, Dynamic to buy um, you know, Solana or USDC. So let's, as an example, trade USDC to USDT, right? So let's uh, trade USDC to USDT, enter an amount. Uh, I'll do the reverse because I don't think I have enough USDT. Uh, I'll enter an amount, I'll review, and Dynamic actually does the transaction, the kind of the signing in the background, the session keys. Right, so fully headless implementation with the dynamic SDK that lets you build these types of experiences. Right, so that's a very web two type of experience and trading just worked. I actually bought some USDT, right? So dynamic can be used today in games like Perion. It can be used today in marketplaces like Pudgy Penguins, uh, music websites like Sound, uh, gateways, so Starknet uses dynamic to connect EVM wallets and Starknet wallets together. All across those, you can see different ex uh, experiences. So as you build your experience this weekend, just think about the use case you're trying to build and assuming dynamic can, uh, assume dynamic can help. Now, before I start diving into like seven more levels of detail and show a quick demo of actually how to get started and build with it, questions about this part? It does work on Telegram. Great question. So let me actually show you guys. So uh, we have something that we launched this, um, uh, this week called Telegram Zero Click Login. Uh, so let's pull up the app. Um, can you guys see my screen? Uh, can you guys see Telegram? Perfect, so this is the Telegram bot. You can implement this on your own. You can implement a mini app. And if I click Dynamic Auto Wallets Demo, it'll pop up a mini app and it'll auto log me in, right? So no login required. It uses the Telegram authentication in order to generate a wallet. So if you're building a Telegram mini app, zero click login and just kind of works, right? Or if you're building a React Native application, Dynamic also has a React Native component. So if you're lo uh, logging in with phone or email or anything of that sort, you can use Dynamic either as a fully headless solution or with email and social with our UI. So Dynamic can kind of service you however you want for kind of that user management journey. right? Let's, let's look at a couple more examples. So just as an example, um, what you can do with Dynamic is you can start, actually let me show you guys one more really cool thing uh, that I think is relevant here and then we'll start kind of seeing how you actually set it up. Um, bear with me for a second here. So let me uh, show you all my screen. So this is my mobile app uh, or uh, mobile web. I'll log in with my email account and at that point I've created with one click, I've created a Dynamic embedded wallet. That was it, right? But now my embedded wallet can actually connect anywhere. So if I click connect, and here, go to Uniswap, right? Uniswap. I can actually, within one click, connect the embedded wallet that was created. Let's log out of the current one um, and uh, log in with Wallet Connect. Within one click, I can essentially, let's see, there we go. I can connect the Uniswap app and just trade with my embedded wallet on Uniswap or in Magic Eden or anything like that. Right, so I can start building global connectivity or the ability to just generate an embedded wallet and have it be used anywhere. So if you're building a wallet this weekend or you're building experience that requires starting on your site and then trading NFTs or doing anything of that sort, you can use Dynamic as well. Yeah. Yeah, that's a great question. So uh, the question was, if you log in on app A and app B with the same Google, does it generate the same app, uh, the same wallet? The answer is no. Today it's actually siloed, but each one can connect. So app A can connect to app B and app B can connect to app B A via that QR code scanning. So it's siloed for security reason, but then you can start building really sophisticated experiences where for instance, let's say you're building a brand, you can have other sites um, as an example, uh, Legion Key, which is kind of a, a brand for gaming, you can then have a second site that implements QR code scanning with Legion Key, right? So you can start building these experiences, but short answer to your question, uh, when you go to two separate sites, you actually create siloed uh, wallets for, for security reason. Yes. Yeah, so we use, uh, we use trusted execution environments. So essentially, as soon as uh, you log in with Google, I do two things. I generate a JWT, 
right? And I use that to kind of, uh, and then I generate in a trusted execution environment or in AWS kind of a private key. And essentially I give you the key to the key, right? And you can establish, and depending on your security, you can establish session keys on the front end, right? So as soon as you log in with Google, there's a session key for the user and they can just sign or essentially trigger a signature from the trusted execution environment. Or you can add security and you can say, actually add a pass key as the key to the key, right? So add a face ID and say only sign uh, with a face ID. So I'll, I can show it in a minute, but essentially after login, after Google, you can add a second security step of MFA and have, hey, for DeFi apps or for more complex apps, have this second security layer. Um, before I continue, more questions. How am I doing on time? Five minutes. Oh, in five minutes, we can do plenty of things in five minutes. Uh, more questions about that before I continue. Okay, so let's actually see how you can actually get started with Dynamic. So the easiest way to get started with Dynamic is just NPX create Dynamic app, right? So if I just go, uh, let's do NPX create Dynamic uh, app at latest. Uh, you can, or not, let's see. I just, uh, hold on, let's try this again. Air config. Let's see if I can do that. No, okay. I'm not gonna show this part of the demo. Let's, let's actually do this again. And um, let's do a new tab, one second. Oh, whoa, everything's broken. Hold on. Let's try this again. When in doubt, let's reset console. There we go. Um, uh, and then we have NPX. Create dynamic latest, right? So let's do that, and let's start going through the flow. And uh, lesson of the day, when in doubt, reset your terminal. Uh, so in order to get started with dynamic, super straightforward. So create dynamic app, NPX, and I'll choose what I want. So let's say React.js app. Uh, I'll choose the chains I want. So I'll do Ethereum for now. Actually, let me do Ethereum Solana just to make it interesting. I'll hit enter. Am I using Veeam? I am using Veeam. You can use Dynamic with Veeam or with Ethers, depending on whatever you know is, is best for you. Uh, you can add you can add Wagme to Dynamic if you want. You don't have to. Uh, and at that point, I'll generate my project. So that is the easiest way to get started with Dynamic. It's really five clicks, and at that point, you have a full scaffold app. So let's uh, let's kind of have it generate it. As soon as it generates it, let's navigate to it, and you can see the full structure. I can npm install, npm start, at that point I'm good to go. I add my environment ID and I have a full project running. Now we have, uh, as this runs, because we have three minutes, I wanna show you guys one more cool thing, which is we saw one side of dynamic. And that side of dynamic was kind of the SDK and what your users see. But there's a second side to dynamic, which is your developer dashboard. And that lets you start doing really cool things. So this is your developer dashboard and you can start kind of managing your users. You can see how they use the software. You can do analytics. If you're building an email service or anything of that sort, you can set up webhooks. So every time someone creates a wallet or logs in, you can generate webhooks, right? So there are a bunch of tools that you can explore with Dynamic beyond just that SDK. You can start toggling things on and off. So you can say email login or phone login or everything we saw, set up your environment ID and pretty much come to this dashboard and toggle things on and off. So if you want to add kind of additional security layers, or if you want to add chains across EVM or Solana or anything of that sort, just come in, set up your environment ID, toggle them on, and you're done, right? Um, how am I doing on time? Am I still good? Two minutes. Oh, perfect. I have plenty of time. Uh, if I have two minutes, I want to show you guys one last thing, which is the ability to start doing things beyond authentication, right? So we talked about logging in with Google, logging in with email, logging in with a wallet, generating wallets in the background, but you can do more with Dynamic. So let's say you're running this weekend project and you only want to allow folks with certain NFTs to log into your product. Dynamic is also authorization. So you can build access lists. You can build allow lists or block lists, or you can build scopes based on someone, what someone has in their wallet. So you can start building not just authentication, but also authorization. Or you can start doing really clever things around information capture. So you can say, look, if someone logs in with a wallet, let's still ask them for my experience, I still need their email address. So let's actually prompt after they log in information capture. 
So you can start building these really cool, complex experiences beyond just authentication into authorization, into information collection and onboarding. You can change, again, all the colors here. You can do this headless, you can inject CSS, make it look exactly like the rest of your product. And because we have a minute left, I, I will end with this, which is we're here all weekend. Uh, we are pretty much just gonna have coffee and sit in our booth. So if you have questions at midnight, we'll be there. At 2 a.m., we might have terrible answers because we're half asleep, but we'll probably be there. Just come chat with us. What we're looking uh, for this weekend is really just cool stuff to be built on Dynamic. So the bug, bound, uh, bounties that you'll see can be across Telegram, they can be across React Native, they can be across Flutter, Web. Just build cool stuff that people really like and leverage Dynamic, and that's really what we're looking for. More questions before I wrap it up. Yes. So it's, it's cloud, you require essentially an environment ID, but you pull an SDK, so you NPM install an SDK. Uh, and so most things are on your end. And really what we pull is things like settings or if you use our embedded wallets, we have some cloud components there. So to get started with Dynamic, you would essentially just go to app.dynamic.xyz, create an account, obviously completely free, take your environment ID and you're, you, know, you can hit the ground running. Yes. Yes. Yes, actually you do. If you look at our docs, there's middleware that we introduce, and I can't remember exactly where, so come to our booth later uh, this afternoon and I'll show you. But there's a middleware that lets you kind of hold um, until an action is completed on your end to complete registration. Yeah, so, so we, we can perform a free authorization also in like a Essentially, it's, it, it, that's exactly right. Or you can trigger a webhook, for instance, from here, so you can still continue the flow, but run a process on your end afterwards. So yeah, you, you have some, and the webhooks registration is on your dashboard. So just go to kind of login, uh, and essentially you can subscribe to a webhook on user creation, wallet creation, or anything of that sort uh, under developers webhooks. So you have some option, that was a very long answer to saying you have a bunch of optionality. Yeah. More questions? Yes. Yeah, that's a great question. So the question was about Paymaster. So Dynamic is uh, an embedded wallet and also a signer. So let's say you actually want to add an AA layer, an embedded wall, uh, an account abstraction layer. You can do that. So you can actually toggle on zero dev, add the environment ID. You can also do this with Safe and Alchemy in our docs, uh, and then you configure the paymasters there. And then if you add your zero dev environment here and toggle it on, we take care of the rest. So you can have it uh, essentially, you can um, specify what gas sponsorship you do and the wallet address when someone logs in will be their AA wallet address instead of their EOA wallet address. So just spin up a zero dev account, copy it here and you're good to go. Okay, we're done. Uh, again, shameless plug, we'll be around all day. I'm Itai, one of the co-founders. Uh, the planted question about Telegram was from Adam who is also on the team. Uh, it wasn't a, a you know, uh, so come find us. We're happy to answer any question that you have and good luck with hacking.